no God like Jehovah. Yes, God, we give you praise. We give you glory tonight, oh God. We worship you tonight. We lift your name high above every name. Yes, the battle is dying here. Salvation is going to come. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two minutes to go live. I can't wait to bring you the word of God. Boom, we're going to go to another level. It doesn't matter if the world is falling down. Your trust is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I don't want you to panic and I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to live with anxiety. I want you to live with the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. Two minutes to go. Stay tight. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are getting ready to get into the Word of God tonight. And it is so you deserve the glory. Hallelujah. Well, good evening and welcome. I'm Evangelist Luke McFarland, and I'm so glad to be bringing you the Word of God. And I pray that you are going to be blessed and empowered with what I'm about to share with you. And I pray that you are going to go to another level in the name of Jesus. I want to welcome everyone who's online. I want to welcome whoever is watching. I just pray that you will be blessed. Yes, you will put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ by the end of this message. And you will go to a new level in the Lord. But tonight, before we open up in a word of prayer... I just want to do some housekeeping, make sure we're all on the same page. And I'm just going to step off for 30 seconds and I'll be back in a second. Sorry, I've got alarms going off all over the place. Well, I just want to welcome the Lord into this place. And, and I want to do some housekeeping this evening so that we can get into the Word of God. You can be empowered. You can be blessed. And you can go to another level. Tonight, I'm going to be sharing the Word of God with you. I'm going to be expounding the Word of God from the Holy Scriptures. And I pray that you will just sit back and you will allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. And it won't be my voice that you're hearing, but you will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit speak with you today. Uh, because I'm going to open this service with a word of prayer. Then during the course of this message, I'm going to give you an opportunity to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Your name can be written in the book of life. And I want to give you that opportunity tonight. It is so good to be back. It's so good to be back bringing you the Word of God. I've taken time off. I have spent the last couple of months just waiting upon the Lord, praying, planning, preparing. You are seeing me broadcasting from a brand new location. I want to thank my sponsors for allowing me to use this studio uh, just to preach the Word of God. You'll find that it's different from the previous time where I was sharing the Word of God. There is no television here. There is no monitor to see things. You're just going to have to hear the Word of God and go with me in your Bibles. 
but we are going to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, if this is your first time on Broken Man, I want to welcome you. Welcome into the family. Click the like button. Uh, click the share button. Click the, the follow button so that you can be part of the latest updates that are coming through. And also, share this out with your family and your friends because every time you share this out, you empower others so that they can empower people in turn. You can follow us on YouTube as well. You'll need the handle for that. It's at Broken Man, one word, 1274. Punch that into your search bars. Look for the cross. Click on the like, subscribe, and follow buttons. And here on Facebook, I just want to say God bless you to the 3,000 odd members of the Broken Man family who allow me to speak the word of God. And I pray that you're going to be empowered. Yes, I pray that you're going to go to a new level in your ministry. In, in, in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, uh, I have entitled my message to do with the antivirus that seems to be the buzzword given the time that we are living in. And I pray that you will just be absolutely, absolutely taken to another level. And you will be empowered. Tonight, before we get into the Word of God, let's bow our heads and let's welcome the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, tonight, O oh Lord, it's not me that speaks, it's you, O oh Lord. It's your Holy Spirit. And I pray for everyone, O oh God, that uh, dial into this live cast, dial into the rebroadcast, O oh Lord Jesus that you will empower them, Lord Jesus, that you will take them to a new level. Lord, I pray for your anointing upon tonight's message on why you need the antivirus, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, for the people that are watching, whether they are in a hotel, whether they're in their home, whether they're on a plane, whether they are on some remote place on the planet Earth. Lord, that your Holy Spirit will speak to them. I take authority of the spirit of fear and anxiety, which is so rampant these days, O oh God. And I just pray the peace that surpasses all understanding into everyone on the other end of this camera, on the other end of this smartphone. Lord, I release the anointing into that. I pray for families that cannot be with their loved ones today because of the closures of airports around the globe. I pray for the people who lost their jobs, oh God. Lord, uh, as fear begins to grip and anxiety begins to grip, Lord, uh, use men and women who watch this, oh God. Use ministers who preach this, oh God, to come and bring peace into their lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, tonight as I speak, it's not for my gratification, Lord. I gave up everything for your gospel, oh God. I gave up everything so that I could preach your word, oh God. And Lord, tonight, as I speak, I, I ask for your Holy Spirit to anoint me, yes, O oh God, so that I can bring this word that is uh, liberating me and freeing, O oh God. And now as I go into this word, come and anoint everyone on the other side. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Well, praise God and welcome. I'm Evangelist Luke McFarland, and today I'm so glad I am back here with you live on Facebook, preaching the Word of God, 100% truth, 100% unadulterated, and 100% empowered so that you can be empowered, and in turn you can empower others. As I was getting ready for this message, as most of us around the globe know, as the world goes into a meltdown and a shutdown, so many questions are being raised right now. So many things about the affairs that are taking place on this world, in this world. And there is so much anticipation and so much fear that is going on that you and me need to be, we need to have the mind of Christ in what we're doing. And tonight's message, as I begin to get into it, I pray that we'll not just hear it, but it will enter into your hearts and, and then you will take it and let it work in your mind. And, over a succession of the next few weeks as I begin to bring the Word of God, I'm going to be speaking about how you can live like more than a conqueror. How you can begin to walk in the midst of this chaos that is going on. 
how you can shine. You can have the power of the Holy Ghost that will overshadow your life and you don't have to live in fear. Because God has not given to us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. With that, let's get into the Word of God tonight and let's begin to look at a few scriptures uh, in regards to this message that I'm about to preach. Tonight's message is entitled, Why You Need the Antivirus. And this antivirus I'm talking about is an antivirus that needs to get deep inside your heart. But before it can get into your heart, it's got to get into your mind. Yeah, you've got to get it into your mind. You see, I used to go to church and I used to listen. I've listened to hundreds of messages over the last 45 years of my life. But it wasn't until I started allowing these words to work in my mind and in my heart that I begin to see the change of what the Lord wants in your life and in my life. And I began to go to another level with the Word of God because I began to say, if God is for me, then who can be against me? And today, as we get into the Word of God, I pray that will be your prayer. I pray that that will be in the back of your mind that you will take this word and you will dive deep into it. Now, after I finish speaking, you will dissect it. You will do a study on it. You will let the Holy Spirit speak to you because believe me, every time we go into the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will always have a message for us. So with that, let's get into the Word of God. I'm going to be reading a few scripture today. And as I said, the entire message today is called Why You Need the Antivirus. And I want to share this with you. And then as I break through the Word of God and, and I come back into what you and me are facing today, I pray that somewhere between that, the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to you. As we've been watching the news and we've been seeing with airports closing, schools being shut, uh, businesses coming to an absolute halt, um, restrictions left, right and center, I want to encourage you, work with your authorities, work with your institutions, your organizations, and do as they're telling you because this is for the benefit of your life. This is the benefit of your family and your loved ones. And I want to say to you that even though everything is shifting, we are in one of the biggest economic shifts that will ever happen since the Great Depression. Well over a hundred years, the concept of the eight to five job will be all but gone in a few weeks, maybe even in a few months time. But that doesn't mean you have to fear. That means you don't have to live in anxiety. No, you need to start using this mind. You see, you and me have been given the mind of Christ. When, when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart, you took on his DNA. You have to understand this. You must get this through your mind. Is that the word of God is not just hearsay. It's not hypothetical. You can apply this word to your life and you can stand on it and it will not fail you. And I'm saying that because I know, because I live on it, and I literally walk on water because of the Word of God. Tonight, if you have your Bibles, let's go into the Old Testament, and we're going to Psalm 91. And I want to read this in light of what is going on in the world today. Here in Australia in the last two days, 88,000 people have lost their jobs. Yes. 88,000 people who woke up every morning for the last 30 some years and caught a train or drove into work without a carefree attitude today or yesterday woke up and realized that their whole future has been changed and 30 some years have gone from their lives given to an 8 to 5 job. My heart goes out to them and the reason my heart goes out to them is because they've never lived in a state of innovation. They've never lived on the, on the precipice of change, on the precipice of transformation. I want to encourage you today, if you're one of those 88,000 that will watch this video, I don't want you to panic. No, I know you're going through anxiety right now. I know, I've been there many, many years ago. But you can reinvent yourself. You can rise from this because you have the mind of Christ. Just imagine this, the mind of Christ. This is the mind that when God said, let there be light, the sun rolled out of his mouth. That's the mind of Christ. 
You have the DNA of God in you. Your thoughts permeate time and space. So you don't have to worry. How you think is going to be the fundamental driver in how you're going to go forward and how you're going to survive these dark days that are ahead of us over here and around the globe. Tonight, if you have your Bibles, let's read from Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God and Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. I just want to stop there for a second and I want to share this with you. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God. Are you dwelling in the secret place of the Lord? Are you dwelling in the secret place? Are you taking the time to wake up every day and spend an hour with the Lord Jesus Christ? 15 minutes of listening to some good quality worship music in, in quietness of spirit. 15 minutes in reading your Bible. 30 minutes in praying. One hour is gone. And in that 30 minutes of praying, 15 minutes to ask the Lord for what you want, and 15 minutes to thank the Lord for what you need. And there you have one hour of praying. That's how to break up a one hour session. Are you spending time in the secret place of the Most High? Or are you spending time in front of Netflix? Are you spending time in front of Prime, Amazon Prime? Are you spending time in front of the television? Are you spending time in front of the internet? In times like this, you need to be preparing to dwell in the secret place of the Most High God because there is no guarantee to what tomorrow holds. The Bible says, who knows what tomorrow holds? Sufficient are the troubles today. They that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Let me tell you something. When you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, the Almighty will protect you. The Almighty will cover you. The Almighty will will go before you. He will open doors for you. The Bible says 10,000 will fall at my right hand. Another 10,000 at my left. But no harm shall come near me. Is that you today? Is that you today? I want to encourage you today. Free your mind. Because if you free your mind, you'll be able to wear the mind of Christ. You'll be able to live under the shadow of of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. 88,000 people who went to bed a few days ago and woke up always thought that their refuge was their job. Their refuge was their superannuation. Their refuge was the amount of sick days they had. 88,000 of them today wake up and they don't know where their refuge is. But you do. Because your refuge is in the Most High God. Your refuge is in the God who has our lives in the palm of his hands. Jeremiah 20, 11 says, 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans not to harm you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you a hope, a future, and an expected end. Yes, that's what the Lord has for you and me. Then why aren't we seeing it? We aren't seeing this is because of our mind. And I'm going to get more into this mind over the coming weeks as we begin to transition from fear into preparation of launching into a new millennia, into a new era of where the life that we have knew, known for the last 40, 50 years is changing. If you still believe that you are going to go back to your 8 to 5 in 3 months time, you are living in a dream world. You have got to start thinking outside the square and begin to ask the Lord to give you wisdom. Begin to ask the Lord to give you direction in where you want to go. I know I'm doing it myself. Nothing I'm saying here is something that I haven't preached to myself. Psalm 91 goes on to say, He shall cover you with his feathers. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. There is a pestilence that is going on around the earth right now. 
And I'm not going to get too much into it because you're watching the news, so you already know what's going on. But I want to say this to you. This pestilence doesn't have to come near you. You see, if you have the blood of Jesus over your life, if your name is written in the book of life, if you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's what I'm going to offer you to do this evening. At the end of this service, I'm going to lead you in a prayer of salvation where you can accept the Lord Jesus Christ and you can become born again. The Bible says no man, no woman, no person, no one can come to the Father except through me. Unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. I don't care how many good works you do. I don't care how many pizzas you bake, how many apple strudel pies you cook. It means absolutely nothing. You will never get into heaven. The only way you'll get into heaven is you must be born again. That is the only way into heaven. Those are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look it up in your Bible and you'll see it. As we go on with Psalm 91, the Bible says in verse 4, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. He shall be your shield, and he will be your buckler. Yeah, you don't have to worry. No, you don't have to worry. I'm not saying you don't have to be vigilant. I'm saying you don't have to worry. You need to be vigilant. You need to make sure you're not in community spaces where social distancing is not being followed. You need to refrain from meeting up with friends and family at this point in time because it will be an offense in a couple of days if you do that. You'll be putting yourself and the people around you in harm's way. You see, when you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, when you have the Holy Spirit leading and guiding you, He will cover you with His feathers. And under His wings, you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your block. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. You know, as I watch the news, and, uh, and let me say this to you, I watch the news not as a victim. I watch the news as a victor. Because it's got to do with your mindset. You see, if you watch the news as a victim, then you're going to perceive the news that you see on TV as doom and gloom. But if you watch the news as a victor, a triumphant one, or better still, as the Bible says, more than a conqueror, then you're going to watch the news and you're going to ask the Lord to show you what you can do better so that you can survive what is taking place. And here the Bible says that in Psalm 91, that he will protect you. You don't have to be afraid of the terror by night. You don't have to be afraid of the curfews. You don't have to be afraid of the, the no-go zones. You don't have to be afraid of, of, uh, of being alone at home. You don't have to be afraid. No. The Lord is with you. He won't leave you. The Bible says, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. The Bible says he shall be your shield and your buckler. He's going to shield you. That's what the, the psalmist is saying. He's going to be your shield. If you will put the Lord Jesus Christ first in your life, he will be your shield. He'll shield you from the infection. He'll shield you from the disease. He'll shield you from the gossip. He'll shield you from the slander. He'll shield you from the lies. He'll shield you from the half-truths because he is your shield. And then he's your buckler. He's behind you as well. He protects you. Nobody's going to come up and catch you unawares. He's going to protect you. He's going to protect your loved ones. He's going to protect your family. Because you have decided to put him as your shield and buckler. Can I encourage you today? Change your mind. Change your mind. Say, I'm more than a conqueror. You know, I used to do this. I still do it. And I, I just kind of showed you because I, I have to take the camera off the wall. My walls are covered with scripture verses. Yeah, they're on little pieces of masking tape. They're on a bed sheet, a white bed sheet. And I just write these little scripture verses down. And I have them on different walls uh, in my home. 
And every time I walk past these these scripture verses, it's like they have a life and they, they just permeate my mind and my heart. And this is what the Bible says when it says the word of God is a living word. It's living. It has power. You just have to stay in the presence of the word of God and it will permeate your life. It will permeate your soul. Why don't you start doing this? You see, we've got a conscious mind and we've got a subconscious mind. And I'm going to share more about this going forward. The reason why we live like we are victims and we are losers is because our conscious mind is in control of our life. And whatever we do in our conscious mind is played back in our subconscious. And when we go to sleep in the night, we wake up in the morning, whatever garbage has filled our heads gets played out in our mind. And then we end up doing this repetitive thing of going on and on in the same circle, in the same circle. I just want to welcome the five people who are on board. If this is blessing you, say amen over there. Because when you say amen, a hundred thousand people are going to see this. Can you believe that? Can you believe broken man reaches a hundred thousand people? Can you imagine the people who once said to me, don't do broken man. It'll go absolutely nowhere. Well, look at it now. One hundred thousand, fifty thousand a week. Watch it every time I broadcast. Because it brings, boom, the word of God. It brings the anointing of God. It breaks the yoke. It's a chain breaker. It sets people free. And that's what the word of God is all about for you. Amen. That's what it is. Say amen. Let's give the Lord glory together. Let's move on. Verse 6. Verse 6. Know of the pestilence that walks in darkness. Know of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Uh, uh, uh. Thousand people might fall at your right hand. But it shall not come to you. Not come near you at all. Not at all. Are you ready to have the Lord Jesus Christ as your swashbuckler? As your armor who walks with you? You're walking around the place and you've got a guardian angel around you. He's with you wherever you go. You need to visualize this guardian angel with you. He doesn't stand around and he's like some little baby in the corner. This guy has wings. He's got a sword. He goes before you. He goes in front of you. He's there to protect you. The Bible says, call the ministering spirits and send them in the book of Hebrews. Ask the Lord to send ministering spirits. Call the spirit of grace. Call the spirit of peace. Call the spirit of love. Release them into your home. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I release the spirit of grace and the spirit of peace upon everyone watching this live cast, wherever they are. I send your spirits of grace and peace into their homes onto the other side that they may be filled with the power, the safety, and the assurance of the Holy Spirit. Verse 8 says, verse eight says Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. I believe. Oh, this is my belief. I could get into where all this started, but I'm going to do that because this is the Word of God channel. And I want to preach the Word of God. And this is also a judgment tool that is being used to bring us to our knees and take us down from these high pillars that we've set ourselves up and humble ourselves. 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, and pray that I will hear their voices, I will hear their prayers, and I will heal their lands. I believe the Lord is saying to every born-again Christian, every Christian that goes to church over here in Australia and around the globe, and whoever's watching this, he is absolutely tired of the hypocrisy that is going on. He wants you to live a life that is 100% dedicated to him. Yes, you will have to be like that man who said I have decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. Some of you are going to have to give up this worldly lifestyle that you have. You think you can go to church, but you want to live with the world. You can't do that. God is asking you to become consecrated towards Him. He's asking you to become consecrated to His Word, consecrated to following Him. This is what the Lord wants for your life and my life. He says, in the book of Psalms, he says, Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord 
who is my refuge? Even the most high, your dwelling place. Have you made the Lord your refuge today? Have you made the Lord your refuge? Is the Lord the first person you run to when you have a problem? Is the Lord the first person you run to when you don't have a problem? You get a brand new car. What's the first thing you do when you get a brand new car? Are you the kind of person when you get a brand new car, before everybody sees it, you just sit in the front seat and you say, Lord, I'm just thankful for this beautiful brand new car. I'm thankful for this new home. I'm thankful for this new life. You see, when you do that, you put the Lord first. You put the Lord first because you have made the Lord your refuge. Even the most high God, your dwelling place. And because of that, no evil shall befall you. People will try. Governments will fall. Economies will fall. People will try to bring evil upon you. But the Bible says if you live under the shadow of the Almighty, no evil will befall you. Yes, 10,000 will fall on your right hand and your left hand. But no evil will befall you. No evil will befall you. Not at all. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The streets might go dim. The people might disappear. The countries might be in lockdown. You don't have to fear. You don't have to fear. Instead, you can use the time in quarantine to start building a good, strong relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's people who built a strong relationship with the Lord that are going to survive this apocalypse that's taking place. This disaster that's taking place, this economic shift that's taking place, which is throwing everyone in shambles because their whole worlds are being destroyed. Finally, no, sh no shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Wow, isn't that amazing? Give his angels charge over you. Angels to protect you wherever you go. Every morning, you need to know that there's angels protecting your home. There's angels protecting you. There's angels protecting you when you drive, when you sleep. The Bible said the devil moves around like a roaring lion, seeing who he can devour. But you have angels that are protecting you. In their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample on the foot. Because... He has set his love upon you. Therefore, I will deliver him. Yes, the Lord is going to deliver you if you make him your number one in your life. No, I'm not saying you have to become a monk and become a hermit and go and live on Mount Everest in the corner somewhere and shave your head and, and do all those diabolical things. No, you can do it right here inside your house where it was part of the world you You can decide to live a life that's going to be holy and acceptable before the Lord. You know, in 45 years of my life, I've come to this conclusion. Real freedom is when you know what your boundaries are. Because without boundaries, all you have is chaos. But when you have boundaries, you enjoy your freedom because you know what can and cannot be done. It's the same thing in marriage, it's the same thing in relationships. Boundaries. When you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have to fear that, oh my goodness, my life is going to be horrible. Not at all. You'll just live a life that's pleasing to Him. And you'll live a life that will honor Him and give Him praise and give Him glory through your life. I always say this to my family and my friends. Every part of your body should bring glory to God. Your speech, your dress, your walk, your talk, your attitude, your behavior, your personality. Everything should bring glory to God. And you should be a person who will always give God the glory. When someone says, my goodness, don't you look handsome today? You should turn around and say, well, thank you very much. It's the Lord's anointing that's over my life. My goodness, what beautiful hair you have. I know. It's the Lord's blessing over my life that I have this beautiful hair. You see, everything should give glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go on because there's a few scriptures I want to share with you. 
Verse 14, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Wow. And he shall call upon me and I will answer him. Listen to this. If you want the Lord to answer your prayers, then you need to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You can't say you love Jesus, but you don't abide under his shadow. You need to abide under his shadow. When you abide under his shadow, the Bible says, when he calls on my name, he, she, kid, boy, girl, doesn't matter. When they call on my name, I will hear them and I will answer them. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? I want you to take Psalm 91. And this is your antivirus. This is your antidote. Pay attention. If you didn't listen to anything else, listen to this next 30 seconds. Take Psalm 91. Type it up. Cut, copy, paste it out. Print it out. Put it wherever you move around in the house and let it be your insurance policy. I tell you, in the years that I, in my home, I have had this psalm up in my house and no plague is coming to my dwelling place. I am telling you. No sickness. You know, I haven't had the flu in nearly 20 years. My kids never used to get sick. They still don't get sick. Because they have the covering of God over them. Take the word of God and paste it on your wall somewhere. Print it out, put one in the bathroom, one in the kitchen, one in the bedroom, one in the kids' room. Put Psalm 91 all over the house, wherever your eyes go normally. Put Psalm 91 there. You will see what this insurance policy will do for your life. It will take you to another level. It will take you to a place where you will begin to see that no sickness is coming to my house. There's no pain coming to my house. All these things are being removed from my life because this is your insurance policy. I want to pick up on another scripture. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. What are you thinking in your heart? Are you thinking that you're defeated? Well, if you're thinking negative, then yes, you are going to be defeated. Because as you think in your heart, that's the way it's going to be. You know why some people can't lose weight? It's not because they're not committed to their diet. They just can't stay committed to their diet. You know why? Because their conscious mind has programmed their subconscious mind. And about two weeks into their diet, they give up the plan and they fail to keep the diet. It's because their subconscious has been programmed with failure. Because they've tried it before and they haven't kept it, so they fail. So how do you become a winner? How you start to think as you should be. If you want to be successful, start thinking to be successful. Don't look at the bills and say, oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Start thinking, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I believe that I'm going to be successful. And I'm going to start sharing more and more about these things as we go forward. And because I'm starting to see a change in my own life. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. But I'm certainly better than where I was one year ago. You see, one year ago, I used to think that I was a victim. But one year later, my mindset, it's called a paradigm. It's that little bit in the center of your head over here that plays over and over while you're asleep. And when you wake up in the morning, when you reach a certain situation and you've done that situation before, this kicks in and plays failure or success. Change how you think. That's so important. That is so important. Proverbs 18, 21 says, the tongue has power of life and death and those who eat its fruit will survive. Do you know your tongue has the power of life and death? Do you know how many people I meet who say, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I'm going to get it. I don't think I'll get this job. I don't think I'll win this contract. I don't think, you know, when you confess that, you confess death over your life. But you might say, Luke, I'm a realist. You might be a realist, but you are also a spirit being. You are a spirit inside this body. 
That's why this body will die, but your spirit will live forever. Do you know why your spirit will live forever? Because your spirit is from Almighty God. So powerful was the breath of God that it spawned the entire human race. I want you to think about that. You are just trapped inside this body. The real you is of the Spirit of God. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. If you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, then why am I still struggling? You're struggling because your mind hasn't been freed. Your heart has been saved, your soul has been sanctified, but your mind hasn't been freed. Therefore, you're not wearing the mind of Christ. The only way you'll fix it is by reprogramming the way you think. And I want you to think about that. And I'm going to get into some deep stuff over the next couple of weeks, not for the faint-hearted. This is only for people who want to start to live like more than a conqueror. Yeah, I'm going to teach you about affirmations. I'm going to teach you about the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. I'm going to teach you about your paradigm. What is a paradigm? A paradigm is a set of programs and instructions that is put into our heads from birth and from the things that we do from the day we were born right up to now. And some of those things inside us are negative things and therefore, like a recorder, it just plays over and over and we keep telling ourselves, I'll never survive. We'll never make it. I don't know what we're gonna do because our paradigm is constantly playing. <coughs> Pardon me. I want to encourage you today. Proverbs 18, 21 says that there is, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Those who love it will eat its fruit. Change your mind. Psalm 91 is your insurance policy. I guarantee you, for those of you who will be watching this in the thousands, I challenge you to take Psalm 91 and put it in your house, in all the strategic places where you think it should go. And you come back to me in seven days, and you can reach me on Facebook, you can reach me on YouTube, send me a note and tell me what's happened since you put these scriptures up in your life. Put it on your phone. Mm. Put it on your phone. Every time you pick your phone up and you take a look at your phone, you'll see the Word of God in front of you. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Don't be anxious about what's going on in the world. Don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. Instead, present it to God and say, Lord, will you show me how to survive? Will you show me what strategy I need to adopt? Will you show me how to, to find work? Will you show me how to start a new job or start a new thing? Yeah, you need to come to a place where you are not anxious about anything. Yes, the bills are piling up. Can I encourage you? Take the bills, put your hands on them and say, In the name of Jesus, I declare that the Bible says, As a man thinks, so is he. Therefore, I believe that I'm a millionaire. I believe that I can make this happen. I believe these bills can be paid. Some of you can't even con confess it because your mind is already telling you, I can't say I'm a millionaire because I've never been a millionaire. You see, I, I challenge you, say, I am a millionaire. I can guarantee your mind right now is telling you, no, I can't say it. Because you don't believe it. But why? The Bible says I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me. So that means I can do a millionaire. I can be a millionaire. So why am I struggling to say it? Because your subconscious has been trained to admit that I was born to... I don't know, do something and I can't do anything more. I can never be the next leader. I can never be the, the next one who champions a cause because 
No one's done it in my family in a hundred years or a thousand years. Maybe so. But you, you're different. You have the DNA of the Lord Jesus Christ in you. When you became born again, your name just you didn't get written in the book of life. You became a child of the Most High God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Can you imagine that? You and me are joint heirs with God. But do we walk around like we are joint heirs? No. We walk around like we're beaten, broken, bashed up. And, and rightly so, we are beat, broken, bashed up. I know. But I've made a decision in my life. I'm going to walk around like a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Do I have all the answers? No, I don't. But he does. Will I ask him to lead me and guide me? Yes, he will. Will I change the way I think? Absolutely. You know, I refrain myself. One of my affirmations I have in the night, I have these scripture verses and these one-liners that I've recorded on my phone. And in the night while I sleep, I play these things. Uh, though yesterday's affirmation is going to be haywire because while I was recording it, there were some noises in the background, pots and pans banging. The dishwasher decided to make some unearthly noise. The dog barked and next thing you know, it got recorded in, in the night while I was fast asleep. And everything was going fine. <laughs> Suddenly, my subconscious woke up and said, quick, run, I think someone's breaking into the house. And so I took off, ran out the front, the side door, checked over the fence, and then I realized that the noises were recorded on my affirmations and it, it mucked up my whole head. The point of the story is very simple. There's such power in your mind because you have the mind of Christ. Deep, deep, deep down in you, there is an unadulterated power that is so pure, it is directly from God. It's deep in your DNA. But the only way you can access it is by working with your higher faculties. School teaches you intellect. You learn the subject, you answer the questions, and they say you know it. But really, it's useless. Because in real life, it's your faculties that will work. Your perception, your will, your reasoning. Your higher faculties. That's what God is all about. When you learn to master your higher faculties, then you're going to start walking on another level. Then you can quote Philippians 4, 6, which says, Be anxious about nothing, but through prayer and supplication, make your request known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds. Amen? You might see a young wolf walking around. His name is Chase Hadley. He is very cool. He's seven months old. He shares the studio with me. And he goes with me wherever I go. And he's a really cool guy. So I don't know if you can see him, but he's just under the camera over here. So I do a quick bet. Look at that. I want to encourage you today, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, don't give up. Don't be anxious. Don't be suspicious of what's going on. But instead, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, with all your mind. And the Lord will come through. Finally, I want to share one more piece of scripture with you. It's been a long day for Jesus. It started early in the morning in Mark 11. Yes, he's been to Bethany. He's preached. He's, he's met with some antagonists that have met him. You know, people who just don't like when you're preaching the word of God. Yeah. Here we go. The next day when Jesus was leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry, seeing in the distance a fig tree in a leaf. He went to find out if it had any fruit, and when he reached it, Mark 11, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. And he said to the tree, may no one ever eat from you your fruit ever again. And the disciples heard him say it. Power of speech. Pay attention. When reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving up those who were buying and selling there. He overturned their tables of money changers and the benches of those who were selling doubts and would not allow them anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And he taught them and he said, It is not written, my, is it not written, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you, you have made it a den of thieves. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and they began looking 
for a way to kill him. And ain't that true? 2,000 years later, you start preaching the word of God. You start preaching 100% truth. And they will murder you, butcher you, and hang you up to dry. We're seeing it. Christians are being martyred for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because they speak the truth. The preachers of the gospel have been relegated to online because the churches today preach nothing but absolute garbage and motivational junk, which drives me up the wall. And I don't know how people get up every Sunday morning and they go and sit in church and the message has nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely nothing. There's no call for salvation. There is no call for repentance. There's no call for being born again. There's no call for your name written in the book of life. There's no call for the blood that can wash away the sins of the world. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. No, there's nothing of that. You see, and just like they did to Jesus, they sought how they could kill him. When evening had come, Jesus and the disciples went into the city in the morning. As they went along, they saw the fig tree which Jesus had cursed and it had withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. And here's what I want you to pay attention to Mark eleven twenty two, 22, right down to 26. Have faith in God, Jesus said. Number one, have faith faith in God, not faith in your bills, not faith in your money, not faith in your, your, your assets. No, have faith in God, Jesus answered. For truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself in the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they say, it will happen. <coughs> Pardon me. If anyone says to this mountain, if anyone says to their problem, go throw yourself in the sea. If anyone says to their financial issue, go throw yourself in the sea. Debt, go and throw yourself in the sea. Separation, go and throw yourself in the sea. Antagonism, go throw yourself in the sea. Lies, anxiety, half truth, gossip, slander, go throw yourself in the sea. And if you believe it, and it will be, says the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, first, believe that you have received it. Whatever you ask for, believe you've received it. Believe that the Lord has paid the bill for you. Believe that the Lord's going to open the door for you. Say, thank you, Jesus, for opening the financial door for me. I don't know where it's coming from, but I believe that you're going to open this door. I give you praise for the day when I'll have the money in my hand to do whatever I need to do, oh God. Because I know your word says, if you believe, then you will receive it. Free your Mind, believe me, I've had to do this. I've had to free my mind. For years I lived in slavery going, I could never become anything. But the Lord spoke to me and he said, you need to free your mind, my son. And these scriptures have been fundamental to my future going forward. Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Not it may be yours. It will be yours. I'm going according to the word of God. I don't care about all these, these, uh, these name it and claim it things and all stuff. I'm going according to the word of God. Says, if you believe, then you will receive it. Believe me, I've been fighting one of the biggest wars in my life. I never anticipated I would ever fight in my life. I never wanted the war. But through this war, one thing has been constant, slowly and surely. Breakthrough is coming step by step by step by step. It doesn't come all at once. It comes in phases. It comes in steps. There was a time in my life last year, I lost virtually all the hair on my head. Virtually all the hair on my head. I have five huge ball patches on the top of my head. I'm telling you, it was so bad. The stresses were so bad. The... the Anxiety was so bad that the Lord just worked on me. And I got down on my knees and I said, Father God, would you please heal me, O oh God? Would you please strengthen me again? 
would you please make a way for me? And then the Lord, he began to touch me. And over three months, January, February, March, the Lord has restored my hair. It's so thick that I actually had to gel it down. Why am I sharing this with you? If a man, if, if a man believes, it will be. The Bible says, the Bible says, but believe that what you say will happen and it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, that it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you. Saints of God, tonight as we come to a close with six minutes to go, I pray that you will be empowered by this message. I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. I pray that you will get a revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Today, I just pray that you will go to another level in the Lord. Yes, you will begin to walk like more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. You will be able to walk like you are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Yes, that's what the Lord wants for you. Today, if you don't know Jesus, today this might be the first time you're listening to Broken Man. Today this may be the first time where you're going to make a decision and I want to say this as well. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. When you have the DNA of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will choose to make a change. I don't care if you're 90 or you're nine. If you have decided to follow Jesus and if you want the mind of Christ, then you're going to have to get serious about living this. How did Paul do it? How did the disciples do it? They were nothing, but they just believed God and it happened. They didn't know how to do it, but they believed. I need to get to this place and somehow I'm going to get there. And they did. So tonight, if you don't know Jesus, maybe this is the first time. Maybe you don't know who the King of Kings is, the Lord of Lords is. Can I invite you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart? Can I invite you to have your name written in the book of life? The Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom. Like you, I had to years ago choose to be born again. I had to choose to welcome the Lord Jesus Christ into my life. I had to choose to say, you know what? I am not the king of my life. You are the king of my life, Lord. I gave the reins of control over to the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, here, you take my life and you take the steering wheel. I'll sit in the back seat and you steer me. And even if we go through rough patches, I know you ain't going to leave me. Tonight, if you don't know Jesus, can I ask you to pray this prayer with me? We're running out of time. Let's pray. If you... If you don't know Jesus, then pray this with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. Lord Jesus, I ask you to write my name in your book of life. I ask you to enter into my heart and I proclaim you as my king. Today, Lord Jesus, I welcome you as my Lord and Savior, and I declare that I am born again. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. Thank you for calling me your child. Today, Lord, I start a new life as a child of God. Help me live the life that you want me to live. I now declare that I am born again. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you said that prayer and you believed it from the bottom of your heart, 
and you meant it when you prayed it, then I want to welcome you into the kingdom of God. I want to welcome you into the family of God because you're born again. You are now a child of God. You are now a joint heir with the Lord Jesus Christ. Go into uh, YouTube, go into Facebook, watch all the many sermons that are up there over this last year and a half, two years. You will get a good grounding in the Word of God. Find yourself a good, powerful, Holy Ghost filled church that preaches the power and the authority of God. Worst case scenario, if you can't find one of those churches, that's absolutely fine. You can dial in the broken man every week and you can come and join me Wednesdays at 9 o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time as I bring you the Word of God and empower you so you can empower others. So tonight, as we come to a close, as we come to a close, well, we will just be empowered with the Word of God. The Lord is coming riding on the clouds. He's shining like the sun at the trumpet call. I want you to go into this week ahead of you empowered that you are more than a conqueror. I want you to go into this week ahead of you empowered by the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't worry about what's going on. Be anxious about nothing, but through everything in prayer and, and supplication, make your requests known unto God. But join me next week as we go into the Word of God. Join me next week as we begin to look at the mind of Christ, how you can adopt the mind of Christ in your life, how you can live the way God wants you to live. And we will go to the next level. Until next time, I want to thank you for being with me. I'm Evangelist Luke McFarland. God bless you so much. I release the power of the Holy Spirit into your life. And I pray that you will be empowered. Take this word, think about it, pray about it. And let the Lord just bless you and anoint you. Until next time, God bless you. And bye-bye for now. See ya. Good night. <coughs>